In the past two decades, the United States and China have been engaged in a fierce competition for influence in Latin America. China has made significant investments in the region, exceeding $160 billion, and has successfully enlisted 20 Latin American nations as members of its Belt and Road Initiative. What worries the U.S. even more is that Latin America and the Caribbean were not initially considered a priority for China's overseas investments. U.S. Senator Bill Haggerty from Tennessee expressed concern over China's growing influence, stating, This is our hemisphere that we're talking about. China is literally eating our lunch. Similarly, Senator Edward Markey pointed out that China has a plan while the U.S. lacks a clear strategy. Containing China's influence and becoming the dominant player in its own backyard will be a challenging task for the United States. Recently, the United States hosted the Summit of the Americas, a meeting for nations from North, Central, and South America to address crucial issues facing the Western Hemisphere. However, the U.S. had additional objectives, particularly countering Beijing's rising influence in the region. China-Latin America trade in 2021 exceeded $400 billion, surpassing the United States' trade volume of $295 billion. Prior to the summit, controversy arose as the United States banned Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua from attending, claiming that these countries did not share democratic values. This decision backfired as it was seen as embarrassing and selfish, leading to backlash from Latin American countries. Mexican President Obrador, in particular, refused to meet with President Joe Biden in Los Angeles as a protest against the ban. Other countries such as Honduras, Bolivia, El Salvador, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines followed Mexico's lead. Instead of achieving its intended goal of building a sustainable and equitable future, the summit will be remembered for excluding certain countries and the message it sent about political games at important world summits. The U.S. government often falls into the trap of talking at other nations instead of engaging in meaningful dialogue. It assumes that its way is the best way, failing to recognize that each country should have the freedom to choose its own form of government and its business partners. Latin American countries have shown a willingness to trade with China due to the perception that the U.S. has a history of intervening in their affairs, overthrowing elected leaders, and establishing coup governments or military bases. China, on the other hand, has been strategically expanding its influence by investing in infrastructure projects, forming alliances, and nurturing political relationships. The majority of countries in the region have partnered with China to develop much-needed infrastructure for economic growth. The Summit of the Americas was an opportunity for the United States to demonstrate its commitment to Latin America. However, it was poorly organized and lacked tangible benefits for participating nations. The U.S. failed to present trade proposals, immigration policies, or infrastructure packages, while China came to the table offering vital infrastructure projects that would advance the economies of participating countries. The U.S. government also faces financial constraints when it comes to providing economic support at these summits. It prioritizes projects that align with the interests of the military-industrial complex. For example, the Biden administration proposed sending $40 billion to Ukraine for military supplies, benefiting defense contractors. In comparison, Biden offered $617 million for the 31 Latin American countries, which amounts to less than $20 million per country. The difference in political approaches between the U.S. and China is another factor in the competition for influence. The U.S. emphasizes its version of democracy, which is unrealistic for every country to embrace. China, however, focuses on offering economic incentives and infrastructure projects to advance the economies of other nations. Latin American countries must carefully consider these factors when deciding how to engage with the United States and China.